So in this video, I'd like to talk about Conficker, um, which is a, a well-known thread. It's actually also been called uh, Down Up or Down Dead Up and even Kiddo. These are other names for Conficker. Um, it's a threat that was first seen in uh, November of 2008, so uh, a few years old as of this video. Um, had millions of infections, and this is why I'm actually talking about it. It was a bit unusual in that at this point, uh, typically you wouldn't see that many infections of a single thread. I mean, the, the malware authors typically were enjoying a lot of success in this kind of micro-distribution model, and so most malware would typically only be seen on a handful of systems. And so a single threat that was a runaway of success of this sort from the perspective of the, the malware author uh, was very unusual. Uh, and I think there were infections in about 200 plus countries. And so clearly it was a threat that got out there. It was really uh, widespread in, in, in multiple regards. So what I want to do in this video is talk specifically about uh, how, you know, what kind of conflict was at a high level, how it propagated, and then maybe I'll do a follow-on video where we'll talk a bit more about its architecture and how it stayed uh, resilient uh, to attempts to detect it. Uh, so to begin with, I, I do want to point out um, that the purpose of Conficker from the attacker's perspective was kind of monetary gain. And there were two different um, kind of ultimate payloads that ended up uh, on a Conficker infected host. Uh, so the first was a copy of what was called a Walladak, Walladak spam bot. Uh, so in fact, uh, Conficker was used to send out spam. That was one of the, the ultimate goals of, of Conficker. Uh, and, and spam, again, is big business. You can really monetize it if you are a cyber criminal. Uh, and the second big thing was the installation of what was called Spy Protect uh, 2009. And this is actually a piece of scareware. And, and scareware basically is uh, fake security software. So the idea is that, and you might have, have heard of situations like this, where uh, when the scareware gets installed, it tells you that your system has been compromised and you need to give a credit card number to get it to be cleaned up. It's basically kind of an extortion mechanism. Uh, in fact, the the compromise is really there. There is really a compromise in the system, but certainly paying the credit card or giving the credit card number is not what's going to get it cleaned up. Uh, and surprisingly, there's again a lot of money to be made uh, for an attacker if they're able to, to trick people into uh, giving their credit card numbers. And it turns out it is a very profitable endeavor for them. Okay. Now what I want to do is maybe start specifically talking about how Conficker spread, what was the actual infection vector and, and propagation. So let's talk about the, uh, the infection vector, the infection vector and what we call propagation of the threat, propagation. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the infection vector. Uh, so there were a number of different infection vectors. The main infection vector uh, was an exploit uh, and it specifically was an exploit of I believe it was MS 0867. Okay, and this is actually a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows uh, server service. And it's actually it was a network service vulnerability. And, and the way it typically worked is if you had, let's say, an already infected computer, um, the already infected computer would uh, look for somebody nearby that, you could, that it could try to connect to. And it would issue what was called a remote procedure call or an RPC. Okay, and let's say it was issuing a remote procedure call to this computer. Uh, the remote procedure call is actually specially crafted and it would include a lot of additional stuff at the end of it. And this stuff was kind of meant to trigger what's called a buffer overflow. And a buffer overflow is basically a situation in which you can um, add some extra data to a payload and then trick the remote computer into executing that part of the payload because you, in, in this particular case with a buffer overflow, the idea is that you would, you would typically um, overwrite what was expected and then start actually writing malicious instructions into certain parts of memory. So you would have maybe some malicious part of the payload. And that malicious part of the payload would then wind up in memory on the, the target system. And then the target system would execute it. And, and you have to actually find uh, places where you can, you can mount these buffer overflow attacks. Okay. Now, once the buffer overflow was caused, uh, that would result in what's called shell code executing on the system. So this, there's basically shell code. Um, executing on the target system. Okay, now the source system itself in Config would run an HTTP server, and once it found its target and infected its target, um, that server would basically would run on a port between I think 1024 
to about 10,000. Uh, this is probably going to some of the minutia, but uh, let me just tell you anyway. Uh, and then the shell code running on the target system would establish a connection with this server. And uh, once it established that connection, the server would then pass back a copy of a DLL which contained the malware in it. Okay. Now that was uh, that was certainly one way that you could uh, you could spread configure, and then really this was really about it. And the, the next machine would also try to find other vulnerable systems around it, and so on and so forth. Uh, the the different there were a bunch of different operating systems that were involved in terms of where this particular exploit existed or the particular vulnerability existed. I think it existed in uh, uh, Windows 2000, uh, Windows XP, uh, Vista, I think Server 2003, Server 2008. And then I believe server 2008 uh, released to beta. So this is a big list uh, of, of uh, different uh, different mechanisms. Um, the other mechanism uh, by which it uh, traversed was actually via a, um, and this was actually done in, in an update to Configur, uh, which was via both uh, dictionary attacks and also removal of media and network shares. And what I'll do is let me actually stop this video right here, and I will talk about uh, other infection vectors in the next video.